Hey pilots, welcome aboard Plasma 1945. We're gonna hit the Kola Peninsula and I'm gonna tell you all about its strategic location in this video where the bears and the submarines rule. Before we get there, fox3ms.com, plugging them because they plug you in and your squad into having fantastic DCS World servers. Kola Peninsula, aka the Kolsky Polostrov, is located in the northwest part of Russia, close to Finland and Norway and is one of the northernmost parts of Russia and before that Soviet Union right across from Canada and Greenland. Now itself is a fairly inhospitable place. Think of Viking lands except now there's a whole bunch of Russians there populated by the regional peoples, the Laps, the Norwegians, the Russians got really really busy with Soviet Union populations in the 40s, 50s and 60s with its ports receiving shipments of land lease equipment during World War II when Russians and Americans were all on the same side. Now, Kola Peninsula has also been featured prominently in a number of video games, and you might be wondering why. Well, its position is fairly important, being so close to the border with Nordic countries and close to the direct reach to the United States and Greenland. So it was featured in F-117A, the F-14 Fleet Defender, and I'm thinking of a couple of more games, but I just can't think of their names. If you guys know them, put it down into the chat. Now you might be wondering, why is it so important and why is it featured? Well, it has a few things going for it. It has over-the-horizon radars, shipyards, submarines, interceptors, and bombers, all based in the closest position to the U.S. as possible. The over-the-horizon radars are a prominent feature, allowing for the Soviet Union to see beyond the horizon using special reflectivity of the atmosphere to detect missile launches and bombers, and gave the Russian-Soviet military the protection and the ability to detect incoming aircraft from way across the arctic circle this was a very key location for that and one of them was based in olenigorsk now shipbuilding is critical up there too it supports the northern fleet as well as has the zvezdochka shipyard and the port of murmansk dealing with a lot of imports and exports of natural resources from that area also, there's a number of military assets all based in the Kola Peninsula, and we're going to look at all of these on Google Earth. This will be subpens, jet fighter interceptors, as well as strategic and anti-ship bomber bases. So let's rewind and take a look at each of those things one at a time here on Google Earth. Let's take a look at some of the landmarks over there. So we are now in the trusty Google Earth. We're looking at continental United States. We've got Alaska up here. And of course, we've got Canada. Coal Peninsula is actually really close by. All we got to do is roll the world like this. Looking at it from the North Pole. So here's Greenland. And here is Coal Peninsula. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. And we've got a few of the bases actually mapped out here. But I'm going to get rid of those. So this is Kola Peninsula, and just to make things a little simple, I'm going to rotate the map back into north-south position and zoom out a bit. So again, we see the Russian Federation with all of its states. Uh, we've got Ukraine, Belarus, Poland, the Baltic states, and as we zoom in here, we've got Russia here on the right side. We've got Finland, Sweden, and Norway along the top, and Kola Peninsula is this region here. So let's zoom in and start checking things out. First things first, we're going to jump down to Severodvinsk, a very significant location. I wouldn't say it's equivalent to Norfolk, Virginia, but I would say it's pretty close. It has ship maintenance, construction, and support facilities for the Northern Fleet and is responsible for the construction of many of the Soviet and Russian nuclear SSBN, that is the ballistic missile submarines that were built and constructed and does repairs on all the large ships in Russia. As a matter of fact, here you look at that, we've got a few models of the Typhoon submarines just chilling out here and uh, we've got additional shipbuilding capability out here as well. Now, unfortunately, because this is a top-down perspective, we can't really see everything. But if we level things out back to this, we've got a few subs back and forth here. 
We do have a Typhoon that is parked right here next to a cruiser, I believe. This is either Nahimov or Peter the Great, one of the uh, nuclear-powered uh, cruisers of the Soviet Union. There's another one under repair in dry dock. Uh, we do have a lot of these fake typhoon class submarines that are just being added here by google 3d which is not really what it should be happening uh we've got another ship under repair here and we've got locations for submarine building here if we zoom in i think we have possibly like an alpha class or these could be the diesel electric subs here and additional ships out here probably the 877 class so fairly significant. This is a major port, major civilian center as well. But uh, as with everything, if you're going to be living up north, you're either going to be mining resources or you're going to be building ships. So Severodvinsk, uh, massive, massive location for Soviet and Russian shipbuilding. Now, Severodvinsk by itself is uh, pretty important. But if we look over to just the east of it, We've got the Arhangelsk Air Force Base. Now, this Air Force Base has seen a better days and better times. We're going to rewind back through time a little bit and see if there's any aircraft here on the ground that we can spot in the prehistoric times. Do, to do, to do. Not, not a heck of a lot of stuff here, but we can definitely see that they, there were hardened bunkers here. We can see their locations right there. Each one of those would be leading up to a stall and potentially there's the hardened bunkers all right let's zoom back out from arhangelsk and severodvinsk and we're going to take a strategic picture again of the kola peninsula here and we're going to jump down to the chem air force base and then work our way up and then we're going to take a look at the nato slash blue force bases so next up we're going to jump right down to the chem air base Let's zoom down and see what footage we have. Now, we are looking at 2013 footage. This is a, one of the older air bases. As you can see, not much of it left, but for the Cold War scenarios in DCS world, would be very nice to actually get a proper use of this air base as an interceptor location. So old base, not much going on here. Zoom right back out. And we're going to move up north from Cam to Alakurti. Alakurti was a fairly significant location for Soviet Union. And the reason for that is because Alakurti was very close to a foreign border. As a matter of fact, Alakurti, if we look at it here, it is a, literally a town, a military town that is built around an airbase. 2013, this airbase is not looking very pretty, but we do have some active aircraft here. If we zoom in, I am seeing transport aircraft mainly, looks like mainly MI-8s. Let's move forwards to 2021. Uh, we've got storage, and I am not seeing very much for aircraft. So it looks like this is just a location for storage warehousing. Although there are some fairly new constructions here in form of residential areas. So this is probably a support base. Um, these squares here, these are typical of uh, army marching areas. So this is definitely a military base here and it is in a fairly good condition. Most likely the air base is going to be upgraded. Additional residences are being built right here. So this is definitely an air base that is likely to be reactivated. So hopefully we do get Alicorti properly. Um, jumping back to 2011, very bad times for this air base. And 2005, do we have anything any better here? Not a heck of a lot. All right, so let's move up from Alicorti and head up north along the peninsula. We're going to go up to the... Olenigorsk, Monchegorsk air bases. So we're going to start with Africanda here and just I'll zoom out one more time, guys, just so you get a picture. So there's Severodvinsk, there's Cam, there's Alakurti right on the border with Finland. Very significant. So let's uh, let's head down to uh, Africanda Air Force Base and take a look over there.
All right, Africanda. Again, another Soviet era base. Not looking very pretty in 2016. Not looking very pretty in 2020. However, this would have been an active interceptor base in the late 80s. So if we get that capability for this airbase, again, it would be very nice. But Africanda, unfortunately, not much to look at right now. So we'll move right up. Just we'll do a nice boring zoom out here and move over to Kirovsk. Kirovsk, major local region. Um, and it does have an Air Force support base, but it's not a full fledged base here. Going back historically, I have never seen any military aircraft at this base in the footage that we do have. But Kirovsk is an industrial location. And as you can see right here, there's a huge open pit. And you might be wondering what this open pit is for. Well, pretty straightforward. There is a village called Titan here. It's actually a titanium mining location here. Up from that, there is a uh, resort area, which is, I guess you gotta have a resort area. And there's an interesting place called Hibine. These are the mountains right here. This is this is the Hibine Mountains, uh, which also share the name with the Russian um, jamming system, the Hibine. So these are the mountains called Hibine, and that's the town Hibine, and uh, shares the name with the Russian jamming stations. Interestingly enough, Kirovsk did host um, one of the major uh, long-range radars during the Soviet days. Let's jump down to Munchegorsk and Olenegorsk, a.k.a. Viskoki. This is going to get a little more interesting here as we get here, guys. And look at that. Right away, we're zooming in. And uh, let's rotate this to the north-south position. Runway 101. And we've got a MiG-31 interceptors here, as well as Su-24. These are most likely Su-24MR, the Marine Reconnaissance strike aircraft we've only got partial coverage here on the map so we can find a slightly better shot obscured by the clouds but we've got a 31 and su-24s fairly active airbase was never shut down and we do have hardened bunkers here as well so hopefully this is taken into account and these are very nice looking bunkers here for maritime aviation and defensive systems also there was an over the horizon radar in this area but what we're going to do is we're actually going to bounce up and away from here and we're going to just go over to Vus Vus Vusoki air force base which means high the high air force base and bounce over to the current time and another significant air force base and what do we have here we have quite a big selection here first off we have this very interesting uh, construction here. This is uh, where the ground crew would be chilling during cold weather. But if we pan along the side here, we've got an Anton of cargo plane, and we've got a Tu-22 backfire here, and we've got additional Tu-22s all the way across here. Uh, if you guys can tell, is this a TU-22 or a TU-22M? I am thinking this is the M's, not the TU-22s. We've got additional helicopters and quite a bit of transport aviation. And even more TU-22s, variable wing aircraft here. Including underground bunkers. So these are probably there's probably aircraft parked in some of these bunkers underground. And uh, whatever's active or whatever's junk is on the top here. So there you have it, guys. So this would be the uh, Maritime Patrol and Defense aircraft around the town of Vysoki. All right, so let's zoom back out and continue our adventures here. And I'm going to rotate the map back to looking a little bit more useful here. So if we continue up the uh, highway here, Highway E-105, we come up to Murmansk. Murmansk is another significant city and town. Uh, ship repair, shipbuilding, and uh, all things naval for the support of northern uh, fleet. We've got a little town of Kola down here. 
And if we zoom in on Murmansk, as you can see, very much industrial town, lots of coal shipments. We've got some additional aircraft, oil platforms, stadium. So this is, this is a fairly large industrial town. But what we want to do is we want to go slightly east of Murmansk and we want to look at the Severomorsk Air Base here and the Air Base Safranovo. So Severomorsk Air Force Base. We've got a nice lineup of interceptor aircraft here. Zooming in, I'm going to make the assumption that these are not SU-33s, although they kind of look like it. Um, are they SU-33s or not? You guys can tell me. There are a couple of trainers, and actually, yes, these are the SU-33s most likely parked here. There you go. There's our collapsed wings right there. So SU-33s from the Admiral Kuznetsov. That's where they are standing and chilling out while Kuznetsov is under repair. Further over, we've got the MiG-29Ks. I believe this is exactly what they are. You can see that some of these wings are folded. So these are the naval MiG-29Ks, very rare aircraft. And moving right along, what do we got here? Not much else. A lot of holes that have been dug up. And let's change our time scale to 2014. Take a look here. Resolution is quite a bit lower, but I can see some folded wings here. So these are SU-33s. You can tell there are shadows here. We've also got the um, K. A-29 Helix aircraft. We've got an AN... Ah, uh, the, the Coke. AN Coke. I, I forgot the designation. AN-24. AN-4, AN-24. I always mix them up. Uh, what else do we have here at this airbase? We've got an RL-38, which would have been the maritime uh, surveillance anti-submarine hunter. And we've got a TU-154 or 134. And we've got additional maritime surveillance aircraft. So very important airbase. Let's zoom back out. And yes, we do have additional reinforced or bermed up parking locations here as well. So let's zoom back out and rotate back to north-south orientation. And make our way up to Mormonsk Safranovo. So that was Severn Morsk, and this is Mormonsk Safranovo. So let's zoom in on Mormonsk Safranovo and take a peek here. Now, this is a fairly interesting graveyard of transport aircraft and IL 38s, IL 18s, the anti submarine aircraft. I'm guessing these are not in use since they're just parked kind of randomly there most likely being scavenged for parts. Uh, interestingly enough, right here, look at that. We have a uh, TU-95. I believe the naval designation is IL uh, TU-143 the, for the naval version. And yeah, we've got a couple of them here in ready to rock positions just off of the main runway. So whereas the other airbase was all about fighters, this airbase is more about strategic bombers and probably anti-ship capability we've got a brand new aisle 38 here it looks like all the goodies are in this area here he's got the gray camouflage of the russian navy and these would be the anti-submarine hunters we've got a selection of helix helicopters here now it looks like it has six blades but if we zoom in and look at the shadow you can clearly identify that it, it's actually a pair of three blades on each of the two coaxial uh, rotors and the large nose that's reflecting in the sun uh, that is the um, radar and a large observation nose of these K829 Helix helicopters. They're kind of like the baby K52s without too many weapon stations other than sonar buoys and they can drop torpedoes. And back over here, what do we've got here? This is most likely where the MiG-29Ks ended up. So these are your MiG-29Ks. Uh, we've got an SU-30SM, I think. And then we've got an SU-25, 
probably the naval version. There was one or two of those made. And SU-33s, guys. So very interesting airbase, very important airbase. And let's take a quick look back in time. That's 2023. Not much of a change. Nothing sticking out here. Uh, let's go back in time to 2005. Uh, pretty miserable looking airbase right there. And just a graveyard of aircraft just sitting around. All right, so all those got moved away, and we're going to zoom out and be done with the Mormon Scaria. But as you can see, very important. Uh, next up, we're going to jump over to Olenia. Olenia is uh, one of the naval locations. So this is now we're leaving airplane themes and going down to submarines. So Olenia is a major location for Soviet Russian submarines. Uh, looks like we have a 3D model of a sub here. And this is the Delphin Dolphin class Delta sub, I believe. I believe it's the Delta class. The 667, 677 uh, nuclear boomer. And there's his buddy hanging right next to him. We've got a couple of enclosed some semi sub pens these could be used for submarine degaussing and if we zoom out a little bit more around Olenia you can see that it is a military installation dedicated to those submarines um, we've got some additional locations here I guess for maintenance and support and the rest of it is logistics so that's Olenia that's one of the locations for the subs uh, if we look at Polarny just next to it Polarny Polarny, Polarny. Um, this was a significant town during the Soviet days. Uh, this is all about the uh, support staff that would work at Olenia or in Murmansk. Uh, it is currently the location for the Russian naval forces up north. As you can see here. Chunk of the uh, northern naval fleet here. And... Uh, uh, we even got some subs here in Polarny. These look like uh, very small submarines. These almost look like the uh, the diesel electrics, or maybe these are even the uh, the little mini subs that the Russians have. But yeah, they look too big to be uh, to be uh, mini subs. Most likely, these are the diesel electrics. All right. So as you can see, Polarny is a very important location as well, and uh, it used to be an I believe an over the horizon radar somewhere out here. So we're going to zoom out from Melania and we're going to jump over to Vidaivo Gajevo. So Vidaivo is another important uh, Soviet Russian submarine location. And as we're zooming in here and we are in the present day of July of 2022, uh, we can see some of the hunter killers here. So these are the hunter killer subs that the Russians would use to shadow the US submarines around. And near here should be the Gajevo sub base, which I have missed. Oh, there you go. Gajevo is, there's Vidaevo and here's Gajevo. So let's bun, bump down to Gajevo, just next to Vidaevo. And this is where the boomers are based out of. So we've got some additional Delta subs here. There they are. A little bit better picture quality there. Got a couple of alphas here with their very specific um, total ray on the back. Uh, we've got a uh, another Delta here. And it looks like another Alpha. That's in 2017 and 2021. They're all just chilling in the same locations. So yeah, there you go, guys. So we've taken a look at all of the major Russian assets here. Uh, let's bump across and uh, start looking over the border here. Uh, there's another airbase in Klyap, Klyp, Klypyavir. Klypyavir? I hope I said, said that right. Um, another major airbase here before we leave the Soviet area. Um, I made a note here, 1999. Let's rewind this back to 1999. 99? 2002. So, a significant airbase. Um, it has been since decommissioned. 
But as you can see, we can see the SU, these look like the SU-27s in 2002 that were parked here. Um, and it looks like they were all packaged up and ready to ship by 2012. And then they were all gone. But Klipyavir would have been significant Russian Air Force base as well. Uh, the border town of Nikol, important town, mining. And now we're going to go across the border and we're going to start in Norway and work our way down to um, Lulea. But let's start up north. Uh, right up here, you might be wondering what the hell is a RAT-31. RAT-31 is a long-range radar that is based on this small uh, um, peninsula here. Uh, we do have an Air Force base, a small landing strip more than a base. But it does house a over the horizon uh, long range radar as part of Honingsvang Nordsvagen here, and I believe the the command and control facility is somewhere out here. I never found it. I will show you a very interesting command and control facility in just a second. But Honingsvag and the air base and an over the horizon long range, not necessarily over horizon, but a very long range radar up here. On this little peninsula. So RAT 31. Do a Wikipedia search for that. Uh, moving right down to that, we've got Banak. Banak is another Air Force location, Air Force base. Fairly uh, important. We've got hangars that are weather controlled. We do have a single runway, uh, but for the fleet of aircraft that are based out here, wouldn't be too much of a big deal. Got a radar dome there as well. So Banak, another important airbase that should be included in the Kola map. If we swing down from here, uh, we've got Kautkeno. Oh boy, I'm going to screw that up as well. Well, let's zoom in on Kautkeno and take a look here. Now Kautkeno is another Air Force location. Hopefully it gets mapped out properly. And uh, we do have a runway here. Not extremely significant, but it is a runway that should be hopefully in the Kola map. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to jump, I'm going to leave Hong's Hog Umpen and Bardfoss for the last bit. I'm going to move down here to uh, Galliver. Galliver, another location for NATO Cold War engagement. Important airbase identified in a few books, novels, and is a potential staging ground. I've never seen any aircraft here based on open intelligence, but Galliver Air Base is listed as a potential Air Force base. Moving down south, we've got Lulea. Fairly large facility. And another Air Force base. Again, there's you don't have airplanes standing around here, but you do have some weather controlled bunkers here and some additional locations that could be housing aircraft. And these look like definite stalls for fighter aircraft. But as you can see, other than the pull through locations there for repairs and maintenance, we've got no aircraft parked out here. So that is that, but uh, Lulea is a very important Air Force base. That should definitely be on the map. It's only a thousand kilometers from the major locations. So we've kind of checked all those out, Karuna, another Air Force base, but we're gonna do jump down to Bardufoss here. Bardufoss is an active uh, F-35 F location. And uh, as you can see, this is definitely a uh, military base. We've got hangars for storing aircraft internally at Bardufoss. We've got an older runway and a newer runway that has been going through some repairs and upgrades historically, and as it should be. Um, we've also got reinforced hardened bunkers all the way along here. So a line of bunkers here and a line of a reinforced bunkers here as well. 
So this is Bardufoss. I think this has to be an important base. And right next to Bardufoss, we're going to look at something really cool. So if we go from Bardufoss slightly north west, so north is up here, so I guess slightly northwest, right? We get to a town of Soriessa. Now the town of Soriessa, it looks like just a calm, chill fishing town. But what it actually is, it's actually one of the command and control locations for the Air Force. And even though it looks very peaceful and very cool, if we go slightly south, and this is actually a bit of a trick here, we go down to here to Hogumpen Soriessa Command and Control Center. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick this and we're going to zoom in and tell me if you guys can spot the location of what I'm talking about. Now, for those of you who have uh, got any experience in um, imaging intelligence and have looked at photographs, something here is going to stand out, and that is this super long shadow. Now, we know that this photo was probably taken um, during the fall because we do have these super long shadows during the fall or spring or winter. And as you can see, it's coming off from this snow cap ball. Now, what that ball is, is actually a long range radar. Here's a picture taken during the summer. And we can see the shadow is much shorter. And this is a uh, Hogumpen Soriessa Command and Control radar. And as you can see, it's got, it's got a bit of camo on there. So because of permanent ice that sits on top of the mountain, it kind of blends in. But there it is. So it was built up and uh, just chills out right up here. I'm not sure how you drive up here. I'm thinking you have to fly in on a helicopter. There's a smaller support town down here. But that little tiny ball right there, I mean, look at it from, from space. If you know what you're looking for, you can spot that tiny dot there. But yeah, that is a long-range radar that is tied to the Soriessa and to the Bardufoss Air Force Base and provides command and control for the northern part of the Kola Peninsula and as part of Norway's responsibility for command and control of the area. All right, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this tour and uh, enjoyed looking at Kola Peninsula in all of its detail and all those interesting locations. Let me know what you think about it. And if you're eager to fly in the Kola Peninsula, Plasma1945 is going to sign off. And as always, share, like, and comment. Plasma 1945 out.